So, welcome back to the shop. Today I wanted to talk about parallels. These are part of setup tooling every machinist and every hobbyist and everybody that uses any kind of machine tool uses all the time. You use it to support pieces up from the table, you use it to support pieces in the vise, to get above the jaws and so on and so on. And you can buy them, you can make them. Uh, I happen to have a collection of uh, parallels here. These are only <laughs> a small fraction of the parallels I have. I, I buy them every time I see a used pair of parallels. I buy them because you never have the right size. This is a set of commercial available Far East parallels. I bought these about maybe 12 years ago and they are hardened and ground all over and uh, when you check these they are, they are quite good. Let's take one of the, this is 6 mm thick and 24 mm high. They are ground both thickness and height and when we check them with, uh, with the digital mic These are really ground spot on, 23.9999, that's not too shabby. And on this side, 23.9998, so um, these are not, these are just as good as a, a commercial available set, or a, 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 a set from a well-known manufacturer, as you can see this one is also 0.998 and this is oh this one is 997 or 998 and this is really they are nice um, some of them are over the years they get uh, some apprentice marks this one got drilled in and has a few chowder marks from an end mill but that's not a problem, you just take your stone and stone it lightly to get off any burr that has uh, driven up by the uh, <laughs> by your little accident. So this is a commercial set, cost about 80 bucks when you buy it through one of the, uh, of the resellers on eBay or uh, yeah, in Germany it's um, Polymod or Optimum in the US it might be Horrible Freight or yeah, a Grizzly, some of them. Then I have a whole bunch of shop made parallels here. These are, I, I buy these at uh, used machinery dealers. And these have a name engraved and somebody made them for, for themselves. And then, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they ended up at the machinery dealer because maybe the shop closed up or yeah, you never know the story behind stuff like this. Um, and these are nice and thick, matched pair. When you buy used parallels, make sure you check them for parallelism, for thickness if you need it. I don't care much about thickness, I prefer to lose uh, lower parallels instead. Uh, and check if they are bent or are dinged or yeah, just if they are in good shape. I have a, a set of four matched big parallels. These are quite handy from time to time if you have to set up bigger pieces. Then there are thinner parallels, these are also, somebody made them in the shop and they have also some, uh, yeah. This, you see this style pretty often, uh, low and pretty thick, almost squarish. I don't use this very much, they are, but they are pretty nice to block in stuff on the surface grinder. Um, the style of parallel I prefer are the thin ones. I, I just recently made me this set of uh, parallels and these are 3mm thick, slightly over 3mm, 
and they are hardened and they are ground in pairs. I, as a raw material, uh, as a raw material, I use uh, precision ground flat stock tool steel. Uh, one twenty. What is one twenty eight forty two? That's uh, I think the ANSI equivalent of steel is O two. I cut it up in strips. I mill them with some allowance, then I harden them, then I straighten them out, and then I'm grinding only the, the height. I'm not touching the thickness because on these thin parallels you cannot rely uh, that they stay 100% straight. So I don't touch the thickness. I straighten them only out so they are somewhat straight maybe within two or three hundredths of a millimeter, but I don't use the thickness for anything. And the set is uh, stepped, so the highest uh, set of parallels is about 0.5 millimeters below the top surface of my vise, so I can clamp parts uh, in the vise with only 0.5 millimeters of stock left on the underside. And as I said, these are ground the myron shop with my surface grinder. And I didn't shoot for a specific dimension because it doesn't really matter. I just ground in parallel. We have 24.985 and we have 24.986. So parallel within one thousandth of a millimeter. That's, <laughs> that's um, uh, what's that? One no, uh, five ten thousand of what? No. Uh, um, half a ten thousandth of an inch. So that's it. Or not. So that's the parallels I use. And in the recent time, I mostly use these because they are just convenient. Why I like the thin ones is um, I can get. I set them up in the vise and when you drill a part close to the jaws you have very little um, chances of hitting the parallel. That's the reason why I like these. And also the, the thinner parallels are not as problematic with dirt. If you have such a wide parallel in your vise there is a lot of area which can sit on a piece of dirt. With these thin parallels the chances of hitting some 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 small chip or dust is, uh, is smaller. So this is the style of parallel I like. And I have a set at work, same style, from 10 to 40 millimeters in approximately one millimeter steps. Some steps are smaller, some are only 0.5 millimeter and always six of each size because I have two or three vices uh, in one row at the machine and then I have uh, I can do three identical setups with the parallels so if you have multi vice setups you have, it's, it's a good idea to have multiple sets of parallels of the same size and what about the hobbyist or the home gamer or the yeah or just the guy who wants to make stuff his own? Um, what can he do to make his own parallels? The cheapest way is to buy cold rolled steel. There's a piece of flat bar, um, three by twenty millimeters, cold drawn mild steel with a carbon, no, nothing, nothing special. Um, and when you take a piece of cold drawn steel, it, it has uh, very clean surfaces, it's sharp edged and it's very precise along thickness and width. I already stoned it, so there are no burrs. 
And when we check it now for parallelism, we have 19 point, ah, uh, let's, let's zero. Let's take this our zero. Okay, yeah, that's zero. And when we go down here, we do the same check again. We are within five thousandths of an inch. And when we go down further, we are within four thousandths of an inch. Then we go a bit further, and we are within five thousandths of an inch. So, cold drawn steel is very precise about parallelism. It's not very good on the nominal dimension, it's uh, eight hundredths of a millimeter undersized. But doesn't matter for this purpose. If you want to make your own parallels now, you just take a bar of uh, cold drawn steel, cut off two pieces the length you need, for example the length, the width of your Y's, if you have a hundred millimeter Y's, I would cut the parallels to about 99 millimeters, slightly shorter than the jaws of the Y's. Clean all the edges, just chamfer them lightly, maybe machine it to length so it looks nice. Chamfer it all, clean up all the surfaces with emery cloth, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you, made your, you made a set of parallels and then use it. It's for 99.9% uh, of all milling applications. This is absolutely good enough. And if you drill into them, you just damage your soft parallel and not your drill bit or your end mill that cost 50 bucks. So that's that's a very good uh, uh, way to get to very cheap parallels. I'm not going to show you how to cut off a, a piece of flat steel and mill it to length. You have to trust me, it works. We did that work for the, in the apprentice shop. We just had cold drawn steel cut off, cleaned up and used as parallels for, especially on the drills, on the drilling, drill presses. On the milling machines we had hardened ones. What you can also buy is um, precision ground flat stock. This happens to be um, Tulox 44. This is pre-hardened to 44 Rockwells, but 44 Rockwells is still so you can machine it uh, with normal tools. You can saw it with a hacksaw or a bandsaw. And as I said, the stock is Blanchard ground. As you can see by the, by the circular grinding marks, it's Blanchard ground. And this is the same thing as the um, cold ground steel. You, you know, just stone it, clean it up, chamfer the edges lightly, cut off two pieces, and then you, of course you check, check it before you do any work to it. Okay, we start here at uh, zero. Okay, zero. Minus two thousands. Plus two thousands. Plus two thousand. So this is even a bit more precise than the um, cold drawn steel, and it looks a bit cleaner. So this is also a good alternative. And if you use the um, two locks, you also get uh, parallels that are pretty resistant against dings or scratches because the cold drawn steel will be messed up when you use it. It will get dinged and scratched and you have always to be careful that it's stoned lightly so you don't have any burrs. But if you want to make a set of parallels and you won't need to buy a bar of precision ground steel for every size of parallel. This gets quite expensive and then you can already buy a set of hardened commercial parallels because um, the, 
the tool steel comes in half meter and one meter sections. And I think this bar here cost about 30 bucks or 20 bucks, something like that. It's pretty expensive stuff. I didn't buy it for parallels. I, I bought this for a certain application because it's hard. So the other thing you can do, you can ask for ask in a machine shop or a tool die shop for scraps of tool steel, um, shim, um, gauge plate or precision ground plate or something like that. O2 is a very good choice because it's very easy to harden. Uh, in Europe or in the, in the ISO world it's 12842. Um, easy to harden, easy to machine, gets and it's, it grinds very well. So that's a good choice for parallels in my mind. You can also use uh, 120, uh, one, <laughs> 12379, that's a steel for uh, punch, punch and uh, die plates. And that stuff really is, gets hard as a brick. It's, it jumps up to 67 something Rockwell hardness and those parallels are quite indestructible, <laughs> but the O2 is a good choice in my mind. And when you have some scraps, you can also buy, of course, a sheet of um, precision ground flat stock, not a problem. Every steel supplier should have that stuff on uh, in storage. Then you band saw or cold saw or use an angle grinder to cut it up into strips that you want for your pieces you want. And then you have to decide what options you have. Can you harden and grind them or leave them soft and just mill them? Uh, I will show you both options. First, we're going to make a pair of soft parallels. We're just going to take them, clean them up, um, deburr them, and then we're going to um, mill them in a pair parallel. After that, we will make a set that is hardened and hard milled. So we will pre-machine them to be somewhat parallel or as parallel as we can. Then we're going to harden them. Then we're going to, uh, yeah, we need to straighten them out because these thin parallels will warp slightly when we harden them. And then we will take a carbide end mill and make them parallel in the hardened state. So hard milling. And then we will make, of course, a set that is uh, hardened and ground on the surface grinder. Uh, let's go to the milling machine and start with the soft parallels. Okay, we're over at the milling machine and this is the setup to mill the soft parallels. After two rough sawn blanks deburred and I clamped them onto a narrow parallel, parallel that's below the two parts. And I do this so I can come in with an, a small lamp mill and side mill them. Then I will go over to the other side and side mill them too, and then they will come out as precise as the machine geometry is. Without any additional setup work or aligning or fiddling around. Okay, I used a 4 flute 4 millimeter carbide amp mill, dry at about 1000 RPM, and we get a nice finish on both of the parts. I did one finishing cut in conventional milling, and then without adjusting the depth of cut, I did a spring pass back climb milling, and that's resulting in a very fine, very, very clean cut. Now we will step over 
and we will clean up the back side without disturbing the setup at all. I set up the cutter behind uh, on, on the rear side of the parallels. I rearranged the camera of course so you can see what's happening and we're going to clean up this side too. Okay, this is how the parallel looks now. I didn't shoot for a specific dimension in this direction, and yeah, should be good. Now we can take it off and give it a check on the surface plate. Look what look like parallels already. Of course, before we check them, we have to deburr them. And I'm going only to put a very light chamfer on the edges with uh, with a fine stone. So there we go. Now we can check them out. Okay, we're over the surface plate and we do our inspection now. I have both parallels here on the surface plate. Everything is cleaned and I numbered them. This is one, this is two, and I'll write down the results over here. Parallel one, let's draw a parallel. Number two. And we will set, take the center of the first parallel as zero. And I already have the indicator zeroed here. Now we go over to the extreme left and we go down to yeah, minus two, minus two thousands. And we go over to extreme right and we are at minus two. Now we jump over to the other parallel Okay, this is not as good. This is minus six, minus two, and this is minus four. Minus, minus. This is all minus. So we are within six thousandths of a millimeter just by milling without any real uh, precautions. In this setup I, I clamped on the extreme ends and we might have warped the pieces slightly. The end mill was not new. This is a used end mill. And yeah. As I said, I didn't take any special precautions, but for what we did this is quite good and i would say this these are parallels that you can use any day for most of the milling operations on the drill press these are almost too good for surface grinding of course they are not suitable but if you have a surface grinder you can make a better one any anyways so just by milling, taking some, some flat stock and milling it to width, we got a pair of pretty good parallels. And also, these cost about nothing. Especially when you can get scrap steel from, you, from a local mold or dye shop. Anybody who works with some better steels will have a box with cutoffs that you can can trade for some coffee money and if not you can always find the stuff on ebay there is always somebody who uh, found this stuff in a dumpster and sells it on ebay <clears throat> i 
Okay, before we go on to the next style of parallel, I just took these milled parallels and I run them over some 240 grit emery cloth on a, on a piece of ground steel, just to lap down the, the waviness from the end mill. And they improved. So we have uh, again zero here. And we go over, we have zero. And we have, yeah, zero over here, which is quite good <laughs> for milled. And we have zero on this one. We have a hollow here in the middle. This is minus six again. And over here we have uh, yeah, let's say, yeah, minus two. So only by rubbing it down on some emery cloth to hit the tops of the, the waviness of the end mill, because the end mill surface always looks a bit like this. And when you hit it with the emery cloth, you end up with something like this Ugh. yeah you know you, you get the idea <laughs> uh, and just by that we we made this a pretty good set of parallels except for a little bow here in the center which might be from the setup because it might have warped the pieces slightly but as i said i didn't take much precautions to uh, to get it super precise. I want to show you a way that everybody that has a milling machine can do and this is this is the way to do it my, in my mind. Um, milling them in a pair in one setup in both side milling you get better results as by uh, face milling and flipping it around and to the other side. Uh, then you have always the error from the, uh, the the danger of, of getting an arrow from setting it up on the other side. I tried that too and I found it very hard to do in the milling machine. Um, yeah, that are, these are milled parallels. Of course you would have to dress the ends to make them nice and square, but that's it.